Knowledge is power, and power is everything. The scholar will seek out all of the knowledge contained within Skyrim, and has a particular fondness for reading. This build is great for both new and advanced players, as it encourages seeking out the lore within the game. The scholar comes from a wealthy family from the Somerset Isles. As a high elf he was born with natural magical aptitude, and was encouraged to nurture this talent. He spent several decades training in the arcane arts, and developed a deep longing to learn all that he possibly could. Despite learning much from the knowledge contained within the Somerset Isles, he desired infinite knowledge, and believed that the Elder Scrolls would be able to grant him this gift. He travelled through Valenwood and into Cyrodiil, heading towards White Gold Tower. Upon arrival though, he found that he was too late. For an unknown reason, the Elder Scrolls were no longer within the White Gold Tower, instead scattered across all of Tamriel. The scholar will spend two decades searching for any information about the scrolls, before hearing rumours of one being spotted in Skyrim. Despite them only being rumours, this is enough to draw him to the border, where he will be caught in the ambush of Ulfric Stormcloak and carted off to Helgen with the others. When he gets free, he will once again seek out the Elder Scrolls, but will also want to learn from the knowledge contained within the books of Skyrim. The main skills for this character are Destruction, Restoration, Alteration, Conjuration, and Illusion. The Scholar is a master of all the schools of magic, and can use whichever spell may help him the most. Utilising all of the different spells in the game means that you aren't limiting yourself, and can mix and match depending on the situation. In combat you can summon a temporary companion before blasting away with destructive spells, and healing yourself at the same time. Before bartering with vendors you can calm them with illusion magic, and if you need to venture underwater, you can use water breathing to find whatever treasures are hidden beneath the surface. The secondary skills of this build are enchanting and alchemy. Enchanting is going to not be all that important for this build, as once you get all of your equipment, there are only a couple of slots for enchantments to go. This skill does help to represent the scholar's knowledge of all things arcane though, and enchanting items can be a good way to make money. Alchemy will have some more uses for this character, as you can create potions that increase the effectiveness of spells from the different schools of magic. Making destruction spells more powerful is an especially helpful use of alchemy in my opinion. I also suggest either crafting potions to restore your magicka, or making potions to sell so that you have enough gold for similar potions or other equipment you may need. Obviously, at the start of the game, you will want to use the Mage Stone to help you level faster. After this, I would suggest getting the Blessing of the Atronarch Stone. Although this makes you regenerate Magicka 50% slower, it does give you plus 50 Magicka, and gives you 50% spell absorption, meaning the benefits far outweigh the downside. In addition, you will be wearing robes throughout the entire game, all of which boost your Magicka regen speed, so you can easily cancel out the one downside to the Blessing. Being a High Elf will also give you a bonus 50 Magicka, and your racial power of Highborn will let you regenerate Magicka much faster once a day. This power is great for any drawn out fights where you need to keep on getting Magicka back. This build doesn't use any standard weapons as it is a pure mage. You will however want to utilise both staves and scrolls to make yourself more effective in combat. It will almost be essential to use some of these as you will end up with a lack of Magicka at some point and you don't want to be left vulnerable once it does run out. The armour of this build will in fact be robes and clothing. You will however be able to get yourself a better armour value through the flesh spells in the alteration school, which can be increased in power through perks in the alteration tree to make them improved when you aren't wearing armour. You will want to have the archmage robes and boots as your main equipment. These are both gained by completing the College of Winterhold questline, and give some great bonuses. The Archmage robes will reduce the cost of any spells by 15%, grant an additional 50 points of Magicka, and also give 100% Magicka regeneration. The boots will also give you a 40% shock resistance. These are found within the Archmage's quarters, but you can also grab basic pairs of them if you wish to, and give them your own enchantment if you prefer something else. I stuck with the ones I got from the Archmage's quarters, as shock resistance is very useful for any mage. In addition to these, you can wear any rings or necklaces of your choice. Keep an eye out in chests for any with particularly helpful enchantments. And if you have a decent enchanting skill, then you can create your own powerful ones to help you out. 
In addition, you can wear a circlet with the Archmage robes if you so wish. I personally didn't purely because I didn't like the look of it. But don't let this stop you if you're happy with how it looks. The main faction for this build will be the College of Winterhold. Joining the College will give you ready access to plenty of knowledge, and the Scholar particularly enjoys having access to an impressive library. In addition, you may want to join up with the Volkahar Vampires within the Dawnguard expansion. This isn't at all essential for this build, but I feel that it adds something extra to the character. He's so obsessed with gaining all the knowledge possible that he will go to whatever lengths to obtain it. Becoming a vampire will let him live forever, giving him all the time in the world to complete his quest. For a follower, you can go with any mage follower that you find. Most of the apprentices at the college can be made into followers by helping them out with relatively small tasks. In addition, thanks to Conjuration, you can conjure up yourself a temporary companion whenever you need to. As your Conjuration skill increases, you'll be able to start summoning more and more powerful beings, starting at a familiar before eventually being powerful enough to summon Dramora to help you fight your battles. This build is designed to really encourage you to explore the lore contained within Skyrim. Whenever you see a book, make sure to pick it up and read it. The Scholar loves books, and always seeks the chance to gain some more knowledge. The basic mechanics of this build are relatively simple, so everyone should be able to play this character fairly freely, and without it being too much of a challenge. This helps to let all players spend some time exploring the game itself, and learning more about the lore. It's very easy to just run around completing quests and killing bandits, but I really encourage you to spend your time looking into the things you normally wouldn't, read the books in the world, talk to all of the inhabitants, and when you're out exploring, take some time to look around at where you are, and see what details of interest you can find. Thank you very much for watching my first full length Skyrim build. Make sure to comment below with any alterations you think I should make to future builds. I tried to make sure I included everything, but I'm always open to suggestions to help me improve upon my videos. Skyrim Special Edition should be out tomorrow, and I will be doing a playthrough of the game over the coming weeks, so make sure to tune into that, and if you are a fan of Fallout, then make sure to check out my builds for Fallout 4. I'll leave a link to the playlist in the description below. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and share this video, and I'll see you all in my next video.